Hello everybody, this is lesson 11. It's about simplifying expressions. This is the last lesson in unit one. So be ready after this lesson to work on a homework assignment and then a review packet before you have your unit test. All right, well, let's start, start talking about expressions. An expression is just a number or a number with a variable or just a variable so it can be any combination of numbers and variables. And we can also combine those with math operations. Math operations being addition, subtraction, multiplication. Let's see, I use parentheses next to each other to indicate multiplication. And division. So any of those math operations can be combined with any numbers and variables to represent some number. So for example, if I combine the number negative 7 with y, I'm combining them through multiplication. Or if I have a term, excuse me, an expression x plus 7, I'm combining a variable x with a number 7, and I'm combining them through the operation of addition. Or we could have more than one operation going on. So something like 2t minus 9 combines a 2 and a t through multiplication and a 9 through subtraction. We could have 4st minus 1 fourth s. That's an expression and I've got some numbers multiplied by two variables s and t combined through subtraction with a division, 1 over 4, and that multiplied by s. So each of these are expressions. When we talk about terms, we're talking about a number or a number and one or more variables multiplied together. There is uh, one term with a number and a variable, or it could just be a variable. If that's the case, then the number is understood to be 1. If the term is composed of a number multiplied by one or more variables, well, that number part is called the coefficient. And that number part, or that coefficient, is what we use if we are combining like terms. But let's list some terms, some examples of terms. Negative 7y is a term. 2t is a term. So both of these are combined with multiplication. Just the number 3 alone is a term. I could have a variable by itself. That's a term. I could have a number portion that is not an integer, but maybe a rational number or a fraction. And combined through multiplication with a variable s, that is a term also. Notice that there are no addition or subtraction operations going on when I'm talking about terms. So each of these examples is one term. If I go back up and look at our expressions, this negative 7y, well, that's one term. x plus 2 consists of two terms, an x term and a 7. So this is two terms. And each term is separated by the addition sign. In this next example, there are also two terms. The 2t is a term, and the 9 is a term. And in this case, they are separated by a subtraction sign. In this last example, there are also two terms. And again, they're separated by, in this case, a minus sign or a subtraction. So we want to keep in mind that our terms are always separated by pluses and minuses or additions and subtractions. When we talk about like terms, we are talking about terms that have the same exact variable part, meaning the variable and the exponents attached to them are the same. It's possible to have like terms with different numbers in front of that same variable part, and if that's the case, then they have different coefficients. So some examples of like terms, 2x and 3x, 
or 2x and negative 3x, since the variable portions, in each case, x and x, are the same and they have the same exponents, understood to be 1. Those are like terms. Another example would be 18x squared y and 2x squared y. Again, we have the same variable portions with exponents. So x squared y, x squared y, those are like terms. Examples of non-like terms something like 18x squared y and 2xy squared. Although both of these have an x and a y term, they do not have the same exponents. The y is understood to have an exponent of 1. In the second term here, x has an exponent of 1 and y has an exponent of 2. So those are not like terms. I'm going to box that all in together so that it's not confusing and nobody thinks that they are like terms. All right, let's look at the next page and we are going to start simplifying some terms, combining like terms wherever we can. So let's say that we want to simplify, first of all, 3x and 4x's. You want to think of this when you are talking about like terms as 3 of whatever that number is and 4 more of that same number gives me a total of 7 of that same number, so 7x. Another way that you could think of this is if I were to factor out the x or write it such that it was the procedure, distribution procedure to get to 3x plus 4x, I could write this as x times 3 plus 4. That way if I distributed the x, I would get everything above it, the 3x plus the 4x. And then you can think of this as parentheses, there's an operation we can combine. This is x times 7 which we normally see written as 7x, where 7 is the coefficient, the number in front of the term. Let's look at another example. 3x plus 2x plus 5 minus 4x minus 3. Now in this expression, I have some like terms where I have the x's. And remember, we can use that commutative property to change the order that we are adding. And I can't change the order that I'm subtracting, but I can change the order in which I'm adding. So since the first three terms are being added, I could change those. But in this case, it won't help me because I already have my x terms next to each other here. So I could write this as x times 3 plus 2, which in essence gives me 5 of those x's. And I have plus 5 minus 4x minus 3. Now most of you are going to see that we have x terms here and here, so I can combine them and I want to think of this as 5 of those x's minus 4 x's. If I take 4 away from 5, I'm left with just 1 x. And you know we typically don't write a coefficient of 1. So I combine those like terms and I have just 1 x. And then I have 5 and a minus 3 that can be combined. So I'm going to add 5 and 3. Excuse me, I'm going to take 5 and I'm going to subtract 3. And that leaves me with positive 2. So simplified we get x plus 2. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's say we have 4a minus 7b minus 2a plus 
3D. Now, although we use the commutative property in that first example, I'm sure you realize we don't have to use it. We can start just looking for our like terms and then combine the coefficients to give us our total number of that terms. So I'm going to circle like terms here, like I did in example B. There's four a's here, and we want to subtract two a's. So four a's minus two a's leaves us with just two a's. And then we have some b terms, negative seven b's and positive three b's. We combine those and we get negative four b's. If you're not sure how I got that, you can review the previous lessons where we talk about adding and subtracting integers. All right, so this is now complete. We can no longer combine any terms because we're down to two terms, but they are not like terms. Okay, let's look at one more example before we go on to what's down below here. We're going to look at five times the quantity x minus two minus the quantity three x plus four. Now, most of you realize that when I have five in front of this parentheses with two terms in there, then we distribute that five in multiplication. So we multiply the five times the x and the five times the negative two. Make sure you remember to include that negative sign with that two. So combining these, five times x is five x. And five times a negative two gives us negative 10. Moving on to the next part, we want to subtract that entire quantity, three x plus four. You can think of this as either distributing the negative sign, or if you prefer, think of this as negative one of these quantities, three x plus four, and think of it as distributing a negative one times everything in the parentheses. Either way, you will get a negative three x or minus three x and minus four. The biggest mistake students make on something like this is forgetting to distribute that negative sign to every term inside parentheses. All right, now I'm looking for like terms to combine. We've got five x and negative three x's that can be combined. That will leave us with two x's. And then we have negative 10 or minus 10 and minus another four for a total of minus 14. And since those two are not like terms, we can not do any more combining. All right, let's look at this example number two below. You want to find the value of an expression, 2x minus 3y plus 4, and we're told that x is equal to negative 5 and y is equal to 6. Whenever you get something like this, all you need to do is substitute in the value of x and y. into the expression. And a very good habit to get into is when you do the substitution, put parentheses around the values you are substituting. So I'm just going to put an asterisk, use parentheses, when doing the initial substitution. So what I mean is, wherever we have x, we're going to substitute a negative five, but we're gonna put parentheses around it. And this goes in for x. Wherever we see y, we're going to put in a six, going to use parentheses at least initially when we do this substitution. So I'm going to rewrite the expression two, and then instead of x, I'm putting in my parentheses negative five. The minus sign 
the 3 instead of the y, 6 in parentheses, and then we have plus 4. From here, I'm just going to use PEMDAS to decide what to evaluate first. Looks like we have some multiplication going on in two places. Multiplication 2 and negative 5, and also 3 and 6. So remember, multiplication we do in order from left to right. So I'm first going to multiply the 2 times the negative 5, and we get negative 10. Then continuing to the right, multiplication of 3 and 6 with a minus sign in between. That gives us 18. And then I'm just going to bring down what we had before, the plus 4. All right, so now all we have left is subtraction and addition. And we do these in equal priority, but going from left to right. So I'm going to start with negative 10 minus 18. That's going to give us a negative 28. If I bring down the plus 4, there's just the addition left to do. Negative 28 plus 4 gives us negative 24. And that's our value of our expression when x is equal to negative 5 and y is equal to 6. All right, that'll do it for this lesson. Remember that now we're finished with unit 1. You will have homework assignment number 2, which focuses on lessons 9 through 11. And then you will have a review packet for unit 1. And then you will have your unit test. All right, everybody, you've got lots of work to do. That'll be it for this unit. Have a great day.